Hello YouTube, this is Frank from Happy Coder and today in this video, I'd like to talk to you about how to set up your Todoist software properly in the true GTD fashion. And before we begin today's content and without getting into too much detail, GTD, which is an acronym which stands for getting things done, is a time management, a project management system invented by a gentleman by the name of David Allen. And to me personally, the strength of this GTD paradigm lies in its ability to categorize all of your tasks in in different situational contexts so that no matter where you are you can always pull up a list which contains all the tasks that you can only complete in this very specific context in this very specific location and i think it is important for me to share with you my setup because there are a lot of other project management softwares on the market which does not allow you to set it up in the true gtd manner so without further ado, let's get into today's content. All right guys, so now let's go and take a look at my personal setup for my Todoist. And just a disclaimer before we get into the content, this video is not sponsored by Todoist. It's purely my personal opinion on the software. And with that said, let's open up my Todoist and you're gonna see that a lot of the components are going to be very similar with either your setup or some of the setups that you're gonna be found online. For example, I also have an inbox which serves as the inventory which captures all my thoughts throughout the day and I also have a read and review list and a someday and maybe incubator. However, the features that highlight the uniqueness of my setup are as follows. The first highlight I would like to draw your attention to is that I have a centralized projects folder where every single project just goes into this folder and we will come back and visit why I do it this way because I know that some people they put every single project in its own folder inside of this project's pane and I'm gonna come back and tell you exactly why it's not a very advisable thing to do and the next and the second highlight is going to be this next actions folder and again we're gonna come back and revisit why I did it this way the most important feature of this setup is that I'm using labels to delimit all my situational contexts. So I have a computer, home, waiting for a context, so on and so forth. And with that out of the way, let me try to illustrate to you why I created this centralized projects folder. And just to remind you, David Allen defines a project as a goal that requires more than one actionable step to obtain. So with that said, inside of our inbox, let's create a new task called land on moon. And when we process our inbox, we're going to see that this land on moon thing is clearly going to take more than one actionable step to achieve. So let's go ahead and file it under the projects folder by using the hashtag or the pound sign. When we're doing our weekly review, we're going to see this land on moon project. And let's say that the next most logical actionable step is to find astronauts. So let's go ahead and add the find astronauts as a subtask under this land on moon project. And let's say that I can only recruit astronauts when I'm in my personal office. So let's go ahead and file it under the office label by using the at symbol. And this is where the magic happens. When we go ahead and click on the office label, we are able to view the list which contains all the tasks, all the subtasks that are only achievable when we're in our office. And I personally think this sense of clarity is what the combination of GTD system and the Todoist software is going to provide you with. Now let me show you why I said it's not advisable to put every single project within its own folder. Let's try and duplicate the Land on Moon project again, but this time let it have its own folder. So land on moon and inside of this land on moon project let's go ahead and create a task called recruit astronauts and once again we want to file it under the office label and when we go ahead and click on the office label we see that both of the subtasks one from the land on moon project in the projects folder and one from the land on moon standalone project are here let's go ahead and check them off and when we go back to visit their parent projects we see that the land on moon project which is nested under the centralized projects folder has its subtask still retained and also checked off however when we go ahead and visit the standalone land on moon project 
project, we see that the recruit astronaut subtask is nowhere to be found. And this is why I highly recommend you to put all of your projects inside of a centralized projects folder. The reason being, first of all, is going to help you unclutter your project's pain. You're going to have more screen real estate to work with. And secondly, you're going to be able to keep track of your progress by retaining all of your subtasks. And now let's go ahead and take a look at why I have this next actions folder. And this next actions folder contains all the entries that are going to require only one single actionable step to finish. And the reason why I created this folder is because if we just file whatever entry we have in our inbox directly to the label, the entry is still going to be stuck in our inbox. And as long as we do not check it off, our inbox is going to be clogged over time. And let me show you what I mean by that. And inside of our inbox, we have this buy ice cream entry, which clearly requires one single actionable step to complete. However, if we just file it under the errands context by using the at symbol as you can see it still stays in our inbox and so long as we do not check it off the entries inside of our inbox is just going to accrue therefore i highly recommend you to file all those entries that clearly require only one single actionable step under this next actions folder and voila, we have a very clean inbox. And when we take a look at other project management software such as AnyDo or Google Task or Wonderlist or even the Microsoft To Do, we can see that all these task management systems, although they're very competent at keeping track of lists, they do not offer you the option to classify your subtasks using a secondary variable like labels. And in that sense, you can say that the design philosophy of Todoist is that it's a central repository, a database of all of your tasks, and you can use logical SQL-like statements to query the specific tasks that you would like to work on and get it returned to you. Alright guys, so that wraps up today's video. I hope you found it informative. If this is your first time on this channel, we would like to have you subscribed. On this channel, me and Mary do a lot of Python programming and a lot of web developing related contents. And aside from that, we also do a lot of software review and just technology related contents in general. So please click the like button and subscribe to the channel and we will see all of you in the next video. Bye bye.